In this section, we will look at allosteric protein regulation and cymogens. Allosteric regulation fine-tunes most biological processes, including signal transduction, enzyme activity, metabolism, and transport. Allosteric is an intrinsic property of a protein. It's referred to as the regulation of activity at one site, also known as an orthosteric site, and this is usually the active site of an enzyme, by a topographically and spatially distant site. The latter site is designated as the allosteric site. So in this diagram, you can see the catalytic active site area here, and the allosteric regulators can bind at a distant site away from that active site, but still have an effect on the catalytic activity in this site. So they can do that by changing the overall tertiary structure of the protein. So the types of molecules that can behave as allosteric regulators, they can be small organic molecules that might bind to the protein. They could be metal ions like calcium, and they can also be other proteins that might interact and cause changes in the tertiary structure of the target protein. Allosteric effectors can also be positive in nature and cause an increase in activation, or they can be negative in behavior and cause a decrease in activation. So it just is going to depend on the system and on the protein. So for each protein, you might have allosteric activators and you might also have allosteric inhibitors. And these can be activated at different times within the cellular life, depending on the environment and the circumstances. So allosteric protein regulation is very common, and we will focus on this aspect of enzyme regulation a lot next term when we discuss carbohydrate metabolism. In section 8.4, we'll look at zymogen activation. A zymogen, also called a proenzyme, is an inactive precursor of an enzyme. A zymogen requires a biochemical change, such as hydrolysis, to reveal the active site or change the configuration of the protein so that the tertiary structure will change to reveal the active site. And only when this happens will the enzyme become active. An example of enzymes that are initially synthesized as zymogens are the protease enzymes secreted by the pancreas. The pancreas secretes zymogens to help prevent the enzymes from inappropriately digesting proteins in the pancreatic cells in which they are synthesized. Enzymes like trypsin are synthesized as proenzymes. For trypsin, trypsinogen is the inactive precursor that is translated in the rough endoplasmic reticulum and transported to the Golgi apparatus for sorting. In this diagram, the trypsinogen is shown on the right. The green portion of the molecule is the fragment that's cleaved off to open up the active site, which is shown here in pink. So you can see the active trypsin molecule over here and the trypsinogen over here. So this green portion of the protein will keep this molecule inactive. Trypsinogen is always co-synthesized and packaged with a pancreatic secretory trypsin inhibitor, the PSTI, and that's shown here in red. So this will inhibit the trypsin protein if you have premature cleavage that might occur in the zymogen granules that are still housed in the pancreas. So this is like a secondary fail-safe, if you will, to keep the trypsin protein inactive before it reaches the intestine. So essentially, the co-expression of this trypsin inhibitor protein will bind and inhibit any prematurely cleaved trypsin until it reaches the small intestine. During packaging within the Golgi system, the trypsinogen and other digestive enzymes condense into core particles and they're packaged into granules called zymogen granules. The condensed enzymes are stable and minimal activation happens within the zymogen granules. Once the pancreatic cells receive secretory stimulus, the zymogen granules are released into the lumen of the pancreatic duct where they will travel to the duodenum of the intestine. Once in the duodenum, 
enteropeptidase activates trypsinogen by removing 7 to 10 amino acids from the amino terminal region known as the trypsinogen activation peptide. Removal of TAP introduces conformational changes in the trypsin protein resulting in the active form. Once activated, trypsin will cleave and activate other zymogens. These include the activation of elastase, carboxypeptidase, chymotrypsin, and lipase. Zymogen cascades like this are found within other systems in the body, including the process of programmed cell death or apoptosis and the blood clotting cascade, to name a few. In the next section, We'll learn how the cells degrade proteins internally and specifically.